Well, this is amazing to be standing here looking out at lovely Loch Coral and to see all these wonderful people. I have to say, um, I, I feel a bit overwhelmed that everybody is so, you know, gentle and everything about this great work you have embarked on and is so important and one would not expect it, <laughs> you know, the, your whole tone about it and the gentleness and because we're inclined to go, well I am, is at a hammer and tongs saying this must happen, we must change our agricultural practice, it has to all change and we can't have, you know, the dairy sector producing um, milk formula and we can't have the beef, um, you know, farmers having all of these beef produce when they should be really, really moving away to, um, you know, at least fish, fowl, vegetarian. So it's really, um, it's really nice for me uh, to hear your lovely approach. In fact, I feel a bit awkward in that, you know, gentle atmosphere. And I do congratulate you, and I think it was wonderful that you took on this and that your understanding, which was way back in 2009, because really the issue of climate change, um, I remember the first time, Mary, my friend Mary Elizabeth Burke Kennedy is here, the first time we really heard about that was about in 1970, when the, um, the Friends of the Earth they had a, a conference in, I think it was in Norway, and we had a woman from the, um, she was an ambassador from the uh, United Nations, and she was a grandmother of one of our actors in Focus, and she was going there. And it was wonderful to hear that saying, there are species that are in danger, the planet is in danger, and that was so outside our understanding of, you know, how unmoving, how nothing could we were like that, we could not be moved. But of course now we know that we can be moved, and that in fact we are in great danger of being moved, and that our planet is really, really in danger of, as we know it, going out of existence. And it's very hard to get that, people to want to listen to that, and it's, as you say, it's hard to um, blame them, because they can't say, well, how else can we do it? This is the way we have done it. And of course, it wasn't the way that we did our farming. In, during the, the Second World War, when we had the emergency, there was compulsory tillage. And you had the, the soil, as you talk about, and how to have it fertile. That was organized by the rotation of crops. You know, I come from a farm uh, Ming background, and you had the, uh, you know, wheat and oats was a great crop every place in Ireland and barley. And then you would have the next time you would plough, and that would be uh, maybe potatoes, or you had it for grazing, and you had all the lines of, um, you know, carrots, parsnips, uh, turnip, everything. People were self-sustaining, you know. And coming down today, we were really sad looking out that until we got to, was it Nina, we didn't see a patch of yellow. The first field, and we, so we said, what is that? And we think it was barley. And I remember the same thing happening last year, going down towards Wexford, and it wasn't when we go from Galway down, and we got to County Leash, that we saw yellow fields. And it's just so, so heartbreakingly sad to think that all of that expertise and all that way of treating the planet and of people living together. It was all wiped out in the interest of a kind of free, free trade and all the things we thought were great. But in fact, now we're finding that we're not great at all. I mean, I remember when you couldn't sell your eggs to the eggler that used to come around in his van, that they had to come from a shop all in a six pack carton and all the same size and all the thing. And people bought them still a bit under the counter. And it's great in the last years, there's so much 
awareness and a, um, I have speech about this, but I have to do my own thing, to say we are so indebted to the United Nations. They are the people, I think, who have done the research and who have brought this awareness, you know, from, from everything, from, as I said, the, the formula is a big thing for me. It's just sustainable food it is so important for the world, the earth if it's to uh, survive. And the United Nations, after lots of research and lots of arguments over years, since the um, by any uh, they, the one in, in China and then the, uh, the um, Millennium Goals and that, have been working to see how can we do something that will save the planet. And uh, they came to fruition in 1915 when in New York at the United Nations meeting, 200 countries signed up to have an agreed program, one agenda for the whole world of the Sustainable Development Goals. And that was to uh, a plan that would eliminate poverty, that would um, save the planet, and that would, everyone would flourish in it. Now, there's so much, and it's just, you're so much a, a, a part of this, and you're so wonderful to be in so early. But it's, you know, every, de uh, every department, every country that's signed up to this, in every department, like you say, Eamon Ryan and, and, and uh, um, um, no, yeah, but, but uh, um, your, your name, no, you, 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 Tanya, Tanya Benassi, I knew her mother, Mary Benassi, <laughs> yeah, but um, every country, every department has to have somebody in it that is working on this on how, and of course it's going to be so hard to get people to move from it, but the, the, the new legislation, new things for the equality of women, all of these are coming from that central thing, because if women are not emancipated, there's no way that this, they are the people who do the work in so many places, Africa, they are the people who have not uh, title to land and it can be sell, sold away, all kinds of things. So a lot of things have been happening and every uh, September to December in, um, in New York, the United Nations, all of the countries come to give an account of how they've been and it's absolutely have been there, it's just amazing to see. I mean, some people come with <laughs> the China, they come with about 2,000 of an entourage, and they all come and they all present how this been, how it's been going. So there are different ones. This year, what I'm speaking about now is that last year it was um, food security was the big thing. Michael spoke at that, and that is why I think this project here is so important, and it's so wonderful what you are embarked on, because. We have to change our way of producing the food, but it has to be, uh, people have to be brought along with it. You know, there's battles being fought all along. You know the one about the turf, the turf, what's the, the turf club, the turf battles that are going on. And it's so hard to get people to understand that, no, it's essential that you do not have these big sausage machines coming in, taking, ruining the, the, the water plains of the earth by cutting away where in, traditionally, as you know, they did it with the slan and you threw it up on top and you had the, the, the fossil then reverted to being rough grazing and eventually would come back in again, I suppose, 100 years to being able to be arable. But all of that, it, it has to be fought, fought for. But as Alvis says, we have to find ways of doing it in, in gentler ways <laughs> than I would be, you know. And I think that is such an, such an example. I'm really very moved with how you did it and how this happens. And um, I have to congratulate everybody. I don't know where my speech is now, but I have to congratulate the department for um, having the initiative. I've just written someplace, I'm sure better here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to my speech so I won't keep going on forever. 
Um, it's just, again, about the degradation of biodiversity and the brutal effects of climate change. And it's been manifested as we know ever greater floods, fires, desertification causing famines and conflicts over scarce resources and leading to millions, millions of displaced people traversing the earth because of this. So the fight to combat climate change is so urgent and it's the most pressing existential crisis facing our planet and humanity. And how we respond is everything. That is why this initiative here today is so important and so encouraging. It is an action that is an example of how the sustainable development goals. So that leads me into this because it's, um, it touches on so many of them that number two is uh, no hunger and number three is good health and well-being. And number nine, I think, is uh, responsible production and consumption. And then the last three, I think, 12 to 15, are three devoted exclusively to action for climate change. So, you know, you're, you're, you're really, really in the, um, the forefront. I don't know what you call it. Peter would know what you call when you're in front of the, the battle, <laughs> for, for really. And this, yeah, and I think that this, when people see how it can be done, the different kind of farming that can happen. So I'm hoping that this, um, that this will be a big success, you know, that people will come and to see how the different things, the way the crops, you know, we're importing millions of all our vegetables, our fruit. <laughs> they could all be grown here. You know, and I think when people see that, and it would be, make farming so exciting that a lot of people who are in that, they will be willing to diversify and go to this, the green, which is what it's based on really. It's, there was, a, I think it was in Vienna or something, the, the, the United Nations commitment to a new green deal where they, the emphasis will be on green and sustainability and of the, the earth being able to renew itself again. So um, I I'm, I'm should go on. I'm taking you to a lot. Peter will be after me soon. <laughs> yeah. So um, as I said, today is the commencing of a fine gathering of expertise, creativity, and vision. All of the participants willing to work together in pursuit of a common goal. Um, that it's, it's amazing. I've just given, it's amazing the collaboration that had to take place for this event to be organised and brought into being. I can tell you, it took me. Uh, um, hours to, to read to understand where because so many people had to be so involved for this to come to pass and it's a wonderful achievement all of the different bodies Alva herself and then the department and then Creative Ireland and then the, the funding of the climate action thing all of the, and then the artists that um for them, you know, it was a wonderful coming together, a great achievement. And I'm hoping that in different ways it will be replicated. And I'm sure it will. I will think that this will really, if it gets out there, that people like the, you know, the Macron firm or a lot of those will see this is the way we can persuade that have a farm, that have all the thing, and that could invite people in, that they're trying something new, they're, trying, they're diversifying, and they're showing how it can be done and how you can have the soil enrichment or crops. So I would think that this will be, you know, how, how it will happen. Um, so, um, it's, and I said, it's, it's very moving to see being put into action an initiative that imaginatively recognized the complex and multifarious citizen relationships that together can bring such thoughts and actions, such ability to the challenge of climate change. And that's so astonishing how you all came uh, with, you know, together and how it happened. So uh, how can we congratulate and compliment all the various peoples and bodies that this made possible? Because it's going to act as a pilot program that hopefully will be replicated in various ways around the country as help and advice to the agricultural sector to encourage them to become organic producers of high quality crops produced here in Ireland. So congratulations to Alva Gerard of Brookfield Farm. Uh, first I heard of it, uh, we did the Tidy Towns, we were officiating at it in Ennis a few weeks ago and I got a present 
Uh, I was presented, usually I get a bou uh, bouquet of flowers, but anyway, I got instead, I got a lovely basket from Brookfield Farm of dipped candles and of honey. And next thing is, this comes along. So little serendipities, you know, the, the universe is very wise. There it is. Yeah. So congr and, uh, congratulations Alva Jared Brookfield Farm on her life choice of working, as she says, to support nature within a nurturing community, uh, integrating creativity and vision in food production, and for her development of field exchange, linking creativity and agriculture. So congratulations, Anthony. Congratulations to the two artists who are part of the field exchange. We're looking forward and excited about going to the, seeing the ridges. You very seldom see ridges of potatoes now. You know, the drills. The ridges were where you had three, you put in three potatoes, three slits across, and then you had one uh, ridge there. But it became that it was one sweep down and you had a, a drill. So it would be very exciting to see and how these, they've mixed the two, the, the, the herbs and all the others. So I'm really excited about seeing that. And, um, and I had no, and the loy, to see the loy being brought back into work, for a lot of people who can be doing all this in a small, in their garden, you know, they can be self-sustaining on quite a small garden of producing their vegetables and their everything. And the law is, um, we'll see it, I'm sure we'll see one down there. That's different from the spade. It's a kind of very sharp, it's more like the slam. Yeah. So, um, so that's great to see the loy people and also of experiencing. Now, well, I have experienced it. I could not imagine from the world what John Gerard's iteration of corn work was. So it's, I've seen it and I love the, the thing like the, um, the Brie Jogues or who, who are the ones that go around with the straw things? I think it's the, it's the, the Brie Jogues, the Wren Boys. Yeah, so it's, um, but they look so elegant as they're moving through that, it's lovely. So, and thank you for the Department of Environment and to the Creative Ireland, Tanya, and Climate Action F Programme Fund, and to Tanya Bonatti. And during the 12 weeks, farmers, artists, foods, ex I would think people would love to come to this as a, a holiday. Can you imagine to come and to have all of this, to do all these stone walling and doing everything? Because people are in the city, they're wanting to come and experience that. You could be in business forever, doing, doing, just having people come and experience this. Yeah. So the 12 farmers, artists, food experts, and other committed members of the public will congregate in a great sharing of ideas and techniques to help our agricultural sector to diversify and to implement practices necessary to combat climate change. And this great marrying of artistic creativity, science, and direct on the ground experience will, I have no doubt, create a powerful innovative force, an empowering and enhancing relationship that has such potential to bring about positive and enduring change. So I wish you all well as you commence this great initiative with all its wonderful possibilities. And I thank you for having brought it to fruition and wish you a most fruitful and enriching exchange of ideas. So lots of love to you all. <laughs>